What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to work through five different examples of how to add and subtract fractions when you don't have common denominators. Now there'll be some of the videos that will just go through the process of obtaining the LCD and a couple other videos. I actually break down why we need to obtain a least common denominator when we are adding and subtracting fractions. And as a bonus, there's a nice embarrassing clip of me wearing a head and a mustache. And I don't know why I made that video, but it's all inside. I hope you enjoy. Cheers. Okay, uh, this, uh, <clears throat> what we're going to do is show you fractions when we have unlike denominators. So for this problem, what I'm going to do is, wait, check that out. Ooh, okay. Uh, when I'm going to be taking a look at this, remember when we're adding or subtracting, we always have to make sure we have the common denominators. So in this case, I noticed that my common denominator is 6. So the first thing I need to do, actually, let's, let me first actually show you what 1 sixth would be, remember, one section of these, and 2 thirds is going to look something like this. Okay, so what I'm doing is if I have 1 6 minus 2 thirds, I got to first make them into equivalent fractions. So I'm going to change this to be a 6, so therefore my denominators will be the same. I make sure that whenever I multiply my denominator by a number, I need to make to multiply my number or my numerator. So therefore I'll have 1 6 minus 4 6. Now, just like adding and subtracting, remember, whenever we're subtracting, um, or adding, remember you keep the denominator the same and you just add and subtract the numerator. So 1 borrowing 4 or 1 minus 4 is going to give me a negative 3 over 6. So how do you represent that up here? Well, I drew kind of not really good colors, but really if I was to draw this into 6, this right now currently into 3rd, so into 6 I'd cut each one of these in half. All right, And you can see that, you know, obviously my 4 6 is the same thing as 2 thirds. So what happens is if I have 1 and I need to subtract the 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm really going to be missing. These are like going to be my negative, right? This is what I'm still going to owe. I'm still going to owe these three bars. So 1 minus 4, I'm still going to owe a whole three more bars. That's why we have the sign is negative. So it's a negative 3 sixths. Um, let's just take a look at another example. Let's say I want to subtract 2 sevenths minus 5 fourteenths. So again, in this case, what we notice is our denominators share, one of our denominators, our common multiple shares one of our denominators. So therefore, the common multiple between 7 and 14, or the common denominator, is just going to be 14. So really simply, to get these to be there, um, actually, I made a mistake here. Let's do, no, yeah, that's okay. So what I'll do is I'll multiply by, 2 over 2. So therefore now I'll get 4 over 14 minus 5 over 14. Numerators are the same, subtract, denominators are the same, subtract the numerator, 4 minus 5 is going to give me a negative 1 over 14. And that's your uh, final answer. Oops, here I forgot. Let's go and reduce this. Negative 3 6 can be reduced by a 3 on the top and bottom to a negative 1 half. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's your fractions of subtracting with unlike denominators. Okay, let's uh, let's get at fractions uh, finding common multiples. So remember, when we're going to be adding or subtracting, we got to make sure we have our common um, denominator. And to find common denominator, what we're going to do is we need to find a common multiple that uh, our denominators share. So one of the easier tricks to kind of look at is you know just to write out the multiples of each of your denominators. So if I was going to start it with four. Well, 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 4 is 16, and 4 times 5 is 20. Then if I list the multiples of 3, I get 3, 6, 9, 12, and I'll stop right there. As you can see that they share a common multiple 12. So what that means is three, 4 and 3 both go into my multiple 12. So what I need to do is figure out, well, I need to get them both 12. So I need to figure out what do I need to multiply 4 by to get to 12? Well, the answer is 3. And what do I need to multiply 3 by to get to 12? Well, that answer is going to be 4. Now remember, since we're dealing with fractions, we want to keep these equivalent fractions. So what I'm going to do is I need to make sure I multiply the numerator and the denominator by 3 and 4. So now what I'll do is I just simply multiply across. 3 times 3 is going to give me 9, and 3 times 4 is going to 12. 1 times 4 is going to give me 4, and 3 times 4 is going to give me 12. So now what you guys can see is now I can simply add up my answer, and what I'll end up getting is 
13 over 12. Now, so that's one way to find your equivalent uh, multiple. That's one tip. Another way to look at it is to simply to say, well, what you guys noticed up here is all I did was multiply my one denominator by the other denominator, right? And a lot of times that's going to work. So you can do that for this problem. Let's just skip the chase and let's just multiply by the other multiple or the other denominator. So I'll multiply this by 6 over 6. In this problem, I'll multiply by 4 over 4. And that kind of gets away of a lot of the guesswork that I'm going to have to do. So therefore, I'll be left with 18 over 24 plus uh, 5 times 4 is 20 over 24. Add those two up, I get 38 over 24. Now, I'll get to the reducing this down in a second. But what you notice is since these are both even numbers, I can reduce it. But I wanted to show you a quick little way. A lot of times this works. But however, this isn't always the quickest way because if you notice, I now have to reduce my ending fraction. So that's why it's always important to find the lowest common multiple. And the lowest common multiple is not 24, but it's actually 12, as 4 and 6 both go into 12. So to get into 12, I need to multiply this by 3 over 3. And to get 6 to be 12, I need to multiply by 2 over 2. Therefore, when doing this, I now get 9 over 12 plus 10 over 12 which equals 19 over 12, which if I were to reduce this by dividing it by 2 on the top and bottom, I would get 19 twelfths. So just be careful. Even though this works for all of them, um, you want to find your lowest common multiple. Therefore, you already have your reducing done for you. Welcome, everybody. It's Mr. Biggums back again. So I'm uh, here in this school, and I came in here to go and get on a whiteboard so I can show you how to subtract fractions. <clears throat> now. I don't know where I'm going to be next, so I'm going to try to get this done as quickly as possible, hopefully give you an overview of fractions, because then i got to get out of here before they catch me. I might be in a new classroom uh, tomorrow, and I might be in a classroom with yours next week, so stay tuned. Listen up here so, I can, so you can make sure you understand what I'm going over. So I want to show you how to subtract fractions. Now, the first thing we need to know when we're talking about fractions is what is a fraction? Well, pretty much, if you have something whole, and I always like to think of a candy bar because I'm always hungry. All right. If I think of a candy bar and I divide up that candy bar, let's say I have four friends I want to, or three friends, including me, that I want to divide up. So therefore, I'm going to divide it into four different pieces. So if I divide that into it, what I've just created is some parts out of a whole. So if a whole candy bar is divided into four, four different parts, I have four parts over a whole. Now, let's say I want to, um, let's say I want to keep. Uh, Let's say I want to keep three of those parts, and I only want to give one of those four parts to a friend. So therefore, I've given away one-fourth, and now what I have is three parts out of the whole. So you could say I have three-fourths. Now, in a fraction, we divide how many parts we have or we're dealing with over the whole by what we call a fraction bar. So let's say I have three-fourths, okay? I have three-fourths of the candy bar because what I did was I gave away one-fourth to my friend. Now let's say this girl friend over here wants a piece of my candy bar as well. So I decide to give her a fourth of my candy bar. So if I already have three fourths and I subtract one more fourth, how much is left for me? Let's take a look. So I said I had three fourths of a candy bar. I'm going to subtract. I already gave away one to my friend Fred. But now Jessica over here, I want to give her a part. So I'm going to say three fourths minus one fourth. How much am I left with? So if I take these three sections, subtract one more, I'm left with two fourths. So therefore, I'm left with two more pieces out of uh, out of four in my candy bar. Now, the make one thing we got to make sure is whenever we're talking about fractions, we always want to put our fractions in lowest terms. Meaning, can these two numbers, my top number, which we call our numerator, and our bottom number, which we call our denominator. Can they be divided by the same number? And you can say, yes, 2 can go into 2, and 2 can go into 4. Therefore, if I'll divide the top and bottom number by the same number to get it into lowest terms. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. And you guys should know that 2 out of 4 is 1 half. All right, so you just want to make sure we put it in the lowest terms. So that's the general idea. Now, let's go ahead and work on some extra problems. Okay. So the first one, we have 5 tenths minus 3 tenths. When you're subtracting fractions, we have to make sure that our denominators are the same. 
And what we're going to do is just simply subtract the numerators. So 5 minus 3 is 2 over 10 parts. Therefore, now I can reduce this again. 2 is a common um, denominator for both these. So I can divide the top and bottom by 2 to receive 1 fifth. Now, let's say we have a problem. Let's say that um, I now have, oh, I need to subtract. let's say now I have 3 fourths of a candy bar and I want to subtract 1 third of another candy bar. How much candy, how much parts of a candy bar am I going to have left? Now, it's easy when you have the denominators that I'm saying because you can just subtract the numerators. However, think about it this way, ladies and gentlemen. If I am to subtract 3 fourths of a candy bar and subtract 1 third of a candy bar, well, my new candy bar, or the new amount that I'm going to have, if I have 3 fourths, and look at, I, might, I try to subtract this amount, which roughly relates over here to this amount, I'm left with, looks like a quarter plus another little extra part left over. So I don't really know what that value is. So what I need to do is, I need to segment, I need to segment my new candy bar into a measuring point that fits for both 3 fourths and 1 third. And that the way we find that measuring point is find what we call the LCM, or the least common multiple. So I need to find the least common multiple for my two fractions. So I look at 3 and 4, and I say, all right, what multiples do these two numbers share? Well, 4, 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 4 is 16. Over for the 3's, I have 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. And what you notice is the smallest number that they share is 12. So what I can do is I can now break up my new fraction, or my result, into 12's. Okay, now I know this is not going to be even, but what you could say is, well, how many twelfths is one third? And you could say, well, that's going to be four of them, right? And then how many twelfths is going to be three fourths? Well, let's look at it. To get this to be 12, <clears throat> I need to multiply by 3 over 3. So therefore, I have 9 twelfths minus, to get this to be 12, I need to multiply by 4 and over 4. So I'll have 4 twelfths. So 9 min 9 twelfths, which would be this much. So this is equal to 9 twelfths minus 4 twelfths is going to equal how many twelfths? Well, 9 minus 4 is 5 twelfths. So therefore, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you could say, if I have this many twelfths minus 4 twelfths, or 9 twelfths minus 4 twelfths, it's going to leave me with 5 more twelfths. Let's look at one more example. When I don't have the same denominator, I need to find the common multiple. 5 and 7, let's say I have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and 7, I have 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42. Now sometimes, guys, this can take a long time. Um, it's not always the quickest or the easiest, but sometimes it might be easy to multiply them across, or just multiply your two denominators to find a multiple. It's not always going to be the least common multiple, but it will always give you a multiple. So to get to 5 to 35, which is the smallest, I'm um, not 38, 35. To get to that to be the smallest, I'll multiply times 7 on the top and the bottom. And here, to get this to be 35 on the bottom, I need to multiply 7 times 5. 7 times 2 is 14 over 7 times 5 is 35, minus 4 times 5 is 20, over 35. So therefore, if I have 14 parts, and now I give away 20 parts, I have a negative 6 over 35. So what that means is, it's a negative fraction, meaning I actually owe more parts than I really would have. So you can have a positive number minus a negative fraction that is bigger or more than the other fraction will result in a negative fraction. All right, guys, I'm getting a little too loud, and I need to go back to my next class before the principal comes in. So I'm going to leave you guys here. I hope I helped you guys out, learn how to subtract fractions, um, but I need to go before the get. Now, when you guys are looking at adding and subtracting fractions, 
Um, the main important thing, if you guys remember, when we were dealing with fractions, was when we're adding and adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators, we have to get common denominator. So the first thing we have to do is what we determine is called determine the LCD. Find the common denominator of 5 and 6. And what that means is the smallest number that 5 and 6 divide into. Okay. So does anybody want to raise their hand and see what the LCD of 5 and 6 is? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Huh? 30. Very good. So if it's 30, what we want to do is we want to be able to multiply. Brandon, what are you doing? OK. What we want to do is be able to multiply our denominators so they're both going to be 30. So on the left side, I'm going to have to multiply by 6. On the right side, I'm going to have to multiply by 5. All right. But please be careful, ladies and gentlemen. When we are multiplying a fraction, if I just multiply the denominator, I'm going to change the value of the fraction. So I have to make sure I multiply the denominator and the numerator by the same value. That's going to produce equivalent fractions. So therefore, now I have 18 over 30 plus 10 over 30. Everybody follow me? OK. So now I can simply just add them up. 28 over 30. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, what I want to do is go over another example of fractions adding when you have unlike uh, denominators. So here I'm going to have 2 fifths plus 2 thirds. Now, remember what I showed up here. When you have your, bar <clears throat> when you have your fractions and they're not divided by the same term, so here it's divided by 2 and this one bar was divided by 3, I can't just simply add them and say that's, because think about it, if you add two, the numerators, right, I'd have 1 plus 1, that's going to give me 2. Well, what is that? Is that 2 halves? No, because 2 halves would make 1. Is that going to be 2 thirds? No, because look at 2 thirds only goes up here. It doesn't get to as high as what actually um, your answer is going to be. So what we need to do is make sure we have our common denominators. So to get 5 and 3 to be my common denominators, I'm just going to want to list the multiples of each number. So to list the multiples of 5, I can do 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And I'll stop there and just try check 3 and see where I'm at. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. So what you notice is that 15 is going to be my uh, common multiple. So what that means is my, my answer, I'm going to want to get 15 plus 15. So now what i got to do is got to determine how am I going to get 3 and 5 to be 15. Well, to get 3 to be 15, I need to multiply by 5. And remember, whenever you multiply your denominator by 5, to keep an equivalent fraction, you're going to have to multiply the numerator. So to get, 5 to, be, uh, to get 5 to be 15, I need to multiply by 3. And I multiply on the top and the bottom. So 3 times 5 we know is 15. 3 times 2 is going to be 6. 5 times 2 is going to be 10. Now all I can simply do is add 6 plus 10, which is going to give me 16 over 15. And that is going to be an improper fraction, but that's OK. And I'm just going to leave that as my answer. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, that is how you add fractions, with, or add fractions when you have unlike denominators. Please, please do not just simply add them up and say, give me two parts, and then try to pick a denominator. You have to find the common denominator by using, taking the multiples and seeing which multiple they share in common, and then multiplying to get that multiple. All right, there you go, ladies and gentlemen.